May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted to you, our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Reason to bring hope to the afflicted. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, our preaching would be in vain. And for what reason should we anyway come here and testify about a dead person? I have good news for you today. He rose from the dead and at the center for our preaching. And I like preaching on the day like this one because he rose. And uh, I have already asked the theologians here present, which is the greatest day? Is it Christmas or Easter? But <laughs> so, uh, no, no. Don't be troubled by this. These ones will debate about it. But the thing is, if he did not come back from, uh, to life from the grave, then our preaching wouldn't have been with any meaning. But today we are here to say, he rose, as he said. And that's the center of our preaching. And you can say, hallelujah, 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 he rose from the dead. Pray the Lord. And I want to appreciate God for each one of you that you are alive. And even for me, because this is my first Easter celebration without a lockdown. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Ever since I became an archbishop. And I want to appreciate God for taking care of all of you. But we still mourn the loss of our dear ones, many, many, including our former speaker. And we pray that Lord, the Lord will continue to comfort the family, not only his family, but also her. we've had the loss of the mother of Reverend Esther, of our Kamal chair, and also Reverend Osile of our moves. We continue to pray. They have lost their mothers, both of them. May God continue to comfort them. Not only them, but even others. You there, they have, we have lost many. Let me tell you this. God is in charge. He will give you the comfort you need at this time of need. I, I have learned something. We should always put this life to good use. Because it is fragile. When you still have it, use it well. But also, may you do things that will benefit others. I found a message very interesting when I visited in Kinkiz Diocese. There is a message which was their first uh, theme with the Bishop Ntegerize, who was the uh, first bishop there. A powerful message there. It says, uh, you can do something important so that in the future, even when you are not there, they will know you were there. Let us do something now for God so that even when we are not there, in the future, they will know you were there. I have paraphrased it, actually. It's a powerful message. I, like, I got that message from Kanung. Powerful message. Again, I got a, a message. Somebody sent me a message on my WhatsApp. Said, if you think you have not achieved anything ever since this year started, or if you think you have not achieved much, think about somebody who achieved almost everything and was buried. Think about that one. So that's why we must always remember to appreciate God instead of grumbling. You know, it is easier to grumble than to appreciate. Appreciating God would even get a smile when he sees his children 
are appreciating him. Like this afternoon, this morning, afternoon, I have seen the choir here singing, and I was just imagining even my God in heaven must be smiling, seeing his children, worshiping him in all saints with all the vigor and the zeal to praise him. Clap to the mighty God. Thank you so much, our choir. They deserve a mighty hand clap. Thank you very, very much. Let me appreciate you for supporting God's ministry in all aspects. Intercessors, thank you very much for your prayers, for supporting the church in praying. Worship leaders, worship ministers, choirs, let us appreciate them for the great work. The lay, lay leadership, all leaders here, you are leaders. You don't have callers, but the, the work you are doing is great. May the Lord bless you. Let us appreciate our leadership for the work. I want to appreciate you all for your hospitality. The way you offer hospitality to God's people, for your generosity, which talks about your spirituality. You know, hospitality, generosity, and spirituality are interwoven. So thank you very much for your hospitality. And I want to appreciate you for those who are encouraging others. There are some people who are good at discouraging, and they specialized in that, discouraging people. When you are taking this route, they discourage you. I want to appreciate you for being encouragers, for encouraging others, for praying for others. Thank you very much. I can see you people here who are always encouraging us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you are an encourager, clap for yourself. Praise the Lord. There are those who are dis good at discouraging. They are, they are called sadists. They always specialize in discouraging everybody. You can't make it. This cathedral, you can't complete it. It's a big work. You know, paying the church house debt, it's hard. You can't. Many people have tried. You are not the first archbishop. I want to appreciate you for contributing to the church house uh, project. Now we have lowered it down the debt, which was huge. It has come down to 16 billions from the 60, 50, 40, now 16 billions. And you here, you have contributed, you have met your target of 300 millions. Thank you very, very much, uh, our brothers and sisters here. I want to appreciate the, the media. Media evangelists, thank you very much. Appreciate the media. Appreciate the IT people. IT evangelists, they are doing a great work. We appreciate you so, so much. For security, these people sometimes we, we don't appreciate them. People with uniform, we should appreciate them. Because if they are not there. Yes. Sometimes they are remembered when there is a mistake done. I appreciate them. At least, at least, well, let us appreciate every person. Your labor is not in vain. Let me encourage you, at least today, these days, remember to have even one thing that will remind you to appreciate the person near you, the people near you in your family. The people near you, those who are working for you, appreciate them because they are doing something, really. Let us remember to appreciate them all the time. I have discovered there are some two people staying in one house, maybe one bedroom, maybe one bed, and they are enemies. But today, always have something to appreciate God for. 
this person who's near you. I want to appreciate people who really appreciated us and they sent us Easter cards. And I like these cards, especially for Easter. Because these cards, I, I, somebody called me and said, oh, your grace, uh, I, I am sending you a card, but uh, can your phone receive it? Oh, oh, I like that kind of card, really. Easter greetings. That's a wonderful one. Uh, I usually get many Christmas cards, many Christmas cards in the form of cards written, wish you the best, but there is no mobile money greetings. <laughs> I think this kind of greeting is better. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, it is, I appreciate it better. Even the, these uh, flowers, that, the wreath which they bring, and many, many, where after two days you go back, they are rotten. How I wish people could really send a kind of condolence messages in terms of mobile money. That's very important. So that even after the, the funeral, people can still enjoy and eat and support the, 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 the orphanage with that kind of uh, greetings. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for greeting your clergy with that kind of Easter greeting with a mobile money. Praise the Lord. If you did it, thanks be to God. And today, we must appreciate because we even have now our television, Church of Uganda Family TV. We now own it. So it's our TV. And uh, we are smart TV and other, but now soon we shall be put on DSTV. And we want to thank God. Now, I should appreciate the cathedral leadership here for spearheading the uh, construction project of the cathedral. And as you know, this year, we are celebrating in August 50 years ever since Kampala Diocese became a diocese on its own. So this year, and uh, we must prepare our souls for a smooth transition of moving from where we worship this sanctuary to the new cathedral. Praise the Lord. And the best way to make this happen is to do more contributions. And so I want to appreciate you for the work you have done so far. Continue to do so, so that we'll be able to, to, to worship in the new cathedral. Reason to bring hope to the afflicted is our theme today. According to Merriam Webster dictionary, I liked it. Hope is defined as a desire accompanied with expectation. That desire accompanied with expectation is what is called hope. And now, when we say reason to bring hope to the afflicted, it means hope, that desired expectation is not there anymore. It's not there. And uh, that confidence, affliction, which means extreme pain and suffering. So when we lose the hope, that hope, then we go into affliction. And for these disciples, the death of Jesus Christ definitely took away their hope and it brought suffering, and they, it brought agony. Think about the disciples who were with Jesus three years. Can you imagine three years they were not buying food? Can you imagine three years they left their jobs? The boats for the fishermen, boats were thrown away. The the nets were no longer there. Now, Peter is wondering, what am I going to do? He said, let me go back to fishing. 
He went back because he lost your hope. Can you blame him? The man who was feeding them is gone. Jesus was a mobile hospital. He was a medical doctor. He was healing them. He was raising all the dead. This man now is nowhere to be seen. I think these men were right to weep. And the, woman, the women. Mary, whom we see in John chapter 20, these women were elevated from this level to another. Now where is our man who elevated us? He's gone. The man who saved Mary Magdalene from the seven demons. The man is nowhere to be seen. That's why she had to cry. Of course, she had cried in John chapter 11 when she lost her Lazarus, the, the brother. And now the man who came and resuscitated Lazarus is gone. So I'm sure these people were right actually to mourn, to weep, to lose their hope. For the liberate, uh, for the politicians, it was actually about losing a liberator. Luke chapter 24, verse 20. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. For them, they are thinking about politics. You know, politics. Everywhere is politics. You know, they thought, I think he's going to take over this, uh, the, 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 the Romans. They lost hope completely. In John chapter 20, verse 11, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the, the other at the foot. Verse 13, John 20, 13. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? You have taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. At this, Jesus turned around and saw. Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that he was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried in Aramaic, Rabon, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Clap to the Lord for such a powerful message. I'm going to my father. Who is your father also? My God, who is your God as well? The story of Mary is representing many people who have lost hope. They have started weeping. Many people are weeping. It is also representing many people who have problems in life and they don't know, they don't know what to do. Friday was a day hope went completely. Saturday, Jesus was still in the grave. That's why we don't want to worship on Saturday. Because there was no hope at all for Christians. We worship on Sunday. Because this is the day when he rose from the dead. And he totally conquered death. And this is the hope for our message. Women are blessed with many gifts. They know how to comfort. They know how to care. Women know how to take care of the children. 
most, most intercessors are women. When men are snoring, the women are praying. When men are hiding like Peter, the women are going to the tomb. Clap for the women, actually. But they also have another gift, women. They have a gift of, of crying, a gift of tears, a gift of weeping, which is actually, you know, weeping is triggered by pain. It is triggered by sympathy, by empathy, by compassion. Women have compassion. <laughs> I like that. They, they, they have that gift. Anna, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. No wonder, you know, these women are blessed because they care a lot. They spend more time. No wonder today we have many women who are promoted in the places of leadership. Vice President in Uganda, a woman. Speaker of Parliament, a woman. Prime Minister, a woman. First Deputy Prime Minister, a woman. Cabinet ministers, 80% are women. State ministers, 75% are women. UNULA, a woman. UNPS, a, a, a woman. UCC, a woman. Women everywhere in leadership. Because they are trustworthy. And the provost is a woman. Our provost here. Now, the next step in the Church of Uganda is to have a woman bishop. <laughs> There is no enough clapping. I think we don't like it. <laughs> Women are strong. How could a woman go such alley? Where are they buried? A person, people fear. When a person dies, we fear a lot. I remember when we were definitely burying uh, our friend, former speaker, Joko Paranya, we are there. And the strong wind came and, uh, you know, we were there seated, it brought almost everything. And uh, we had a number of soldiers around uh, with, their, with their guns. Just a blink of an eye, didn't see any. They had all run around and say, where are these people really? I think where security was guru, guru tight, they had disappeared. You see, when there is, and, and it happened when he, when a lady had just whispered to us, she came and to, uh, whispered to us, you know, I have just got a vision that uh, Olanya is about to resurrect. We are all shocked. And after, after that, we saw the wind. So I remember the earthquake, which removed the stone from Jesus' tomb. Say, so, is it another miracle? Uh, another miracle? But look at what happened. The wind was coming our direction. And we are praying. I also prayed, Lord, save us. I want to go to heaven, but I'm not in hell. I still have some work to do. God, save us. And I saw the, the wind. I was sitting with the Archbishop Olombi here. The wind took another direction. The power of God, which can sterilize the wind. This is the same power today that we need to take away all our fears. Let me tell you this. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the city, the God's work is in vain. We need God more and more. Uh, Mary was encouraged and quickly wanted to hold on to Jesus, but Jesus said, not yet. I haven't gone to my father. Here we say declaration. He is your father. He is my father. He is your God. And my God, the resurrection of Jesus Christ unites us with God as our Father, who is also Jesus' Father. We are children of God. And this is what God said, Jesus said, Go and tell others. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is sending us to become evangelists, to preach the gospel the way we can. Listen to these four things which are so key. In Jesus' resurrection. One, just as he rose from the dead, we have confidence that he can accomplish 
all the promises you made for us. All the promises, I will be with you. I will take care of you. I will not abandon you. I am your God. I will prepare a place for you. Those promises are there. Secondly, he is not a false prophet. He is the real God himself who can definitely sterilize death. And now he is the way, the truth, and the life. Also, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is an assurance for our resurrection. When this big envelope, you know this body is like an envelope carrying an important letter inside. Some of us have big envelopes. We may have a tall one. One day it will be pierced and a letter gets out. But here is a message. When this envelope is pierced, that is not the end of it all. The resurrection of Jesus is giving us hope for our resurrection as well. Do you believe it? Clap to the Lord if you believe it. It must be, have been a divine power. And so it is able to deliver us from our hopelessness and from our sins. And this is really the power of the gospel. The one who cried is able now to save us from our tears. The world is bleeding. The world is crying. There is a lot of domestic violence today. The world is crying, but he's saying, why are you weeping? He can take care of our, our tears. Poverty, corruption, immorality, war, high prices. We are crying, but God cannot leave us. Land grabbing is still rampant. And a lot of, when you talk about domestic violence, why are we still having men who are beating their wives? But not, not, not just that. There are some women also are beating their husbands. But women, when they beat their husbands, the men are crying vulnerably in, in their houses. Are, because they tell us, where I come from, from Chakwe, our Saja And there are some names given to children, which means a man doesn't cry. But I got a message last week which really surprised me from a woman saying, I was shocked when I found my husband behind the house crying, crying and crying. Give me food, give me money for, to support my family. That was good. He was crying and the woman just retreated a little bit and he heard her husband cry. Women, allow your husbands to cry, but don't tell others. If you have some little money and your husband is broke, you know, help this guy so that he doesn't cry. You know, there's, uh, because some women are, are gifted in crying, even when, they, when she has some money and the money has no money, he can, she can keep that money and they cry together. I don't have money. I don't have money. They cry together. It is a chorus of, 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 of tears. They come together. You help, you help your husband so that he remain a man. You know when a, a man has no money, he feels like I'm not a man. Let's work together and help these men to cry. Clap to the Lord for that. Land grabbing. Let me share with you a story. When I was a deacon, in, uh, like like uh, uh, Mukate, uh, I, I, this one, the deacon, the one who were well, like a singer. Uh, so I, 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 I was sent to Nachibisi near Jinja. That was my first parish. And uh, I identified a piece of land and I spent almost three years paying it, paying it, and that I left that piece of land there. But recently, because of other developments, I sold it. I sold it. And now, 
This man whom I sold it to came to me and said, the municipality of Unjeru is into that government municipality. They are taking all that piece of land. They are powering their casasero garbages and say, have they paid you? No, they are just taking it. I said, ah, when did the government uh, organized decide to take people's land and they don't compensate them? They have compensated us for Entebbe land and others. And now they are taking that land. So I have tried to approach the RDC. No, ABC. I say, hey, since this was my land and I have documents, I have to ensure that people's land is not stolen by those who should protect them. So now, if you are here, you can help me. Please join me so that we save those people at Njeru municipality, Jinja, whose land is being stolen by our leaders. Uh, instead of saving it. If they want to compensate it, I think that's good and I will I appreciate that. Land grabbing is becoming a problem. Here is a message of comfort as I conclude. Mary Magdalene wept. But uh, this is where we also find Jesus is weeping. In John chapter 11, verse 35, is the shortest verse in the Bible. What does it say? Jesus wept. That's where you find Jesus weeping. We find in Luke 1941, Jesus wept for the city. Jesus never wept for any village. He wept for the city. That's why you find prostitutes, you find mad people, you find the uh, people running from Kalamoja there in the city. Jesus is crying for the city. Crying. Jesus cried on the cross, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabachthan. Why have you abandoned me? So at least in the Bible, we are sure of three places where Jesus cried. The one who cried is the one who is meeting those who are crying. He can sympathize with those. He can identify with those who are weeping. What, why are you weeping? you can meet Jesus who wept to give you comfort, to uplift you, to give you the hope. He is risen to give hope to those who are afflicted. May God bless you and keep you. And hear the message at the beginning, at the end of it all, in Revelation chapter 21, he will wipe away all our tears. He will wipe away all the tears of the widow, of the orphanies, of those who have lost a lot. He is our hope amidst hopelessness. I like this song and I invite the choir, the choir to sing this song which was composed by a man called Don Moen. Don Moen visited the homes for the, for the elderly and he found the the patients and others there, their names there. But here is someone who had no name, but the name which was put there said, no name. Then he asked, is this, is this person called no name? They told him he was unconscious. We just brought him here and he, we don't know his name. That's why he put there, no name. And then he composed a song, a song which, which I like the choir we sing. He knows my name. He knows my name. He wipes away all my tears. Brothers and sisters, you are here today, this Easter. You are weeping. You are troubled. You have lost your hope. He knows your name. He will wipe your tears. He will give you, the, give you the hope. He will uplift you. He will care for you. Even when nobody is caring, he will do it for you. He will lift you up. Even when the resources are gone, you are jobless. He's your God. You don't have the hope. He's God. He's your master. He's your savior. Amidst the hopelessness, he will lift you up. He knows your name. He knows your name. He wipes away all your tears and he will take you where nobody can take you. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen.